Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. Okay, guys, a couple things on this video. One, uh, Steve just updated a, a new release of Primo. And so there's a couple new tools here. One is the Globe tool. And this one is the really cool one, the catenary curve. And so I'm going to talk about those for a second. And then we'll talk about this layout I have over here and see if we want to make that public maybe. But first, just the new primitives. Um, this is his globe and it's just, it's basically just, uh, uh, it's just a sphere, right? And you can, you can change it to faces or subdivision surfaces or Captain Clark sub Ds. I should probably say fade, uh, phase these Moto sub Ds out at some point. <laughs> I'm not really sure they're really useful anymore, but Captain Clark, um, you could do that. And, uh, you know, whatever, change the axis. It respects the work plane. You can, you know, deform it however you want with the handles. Um, you can hold control and they'll be uh, proportional again, which is great. And it's got a couple other controls. You got size and segments again, just um, right mouse, and left and right segments like usual, uh, or sides and up and down for segments. And then you can also make a hemisphere if you want. So you can just do like a bottom slice hemisphere like that, or you can do like, you know, 50-50 and get some other interesting shapes here. But that's that's the that's the globe, easy enough, right? Um, now the really cool one is the, oh, by the way, this is also, um, all of these also exist as mesh ops, every single one of them. So you can uh, go over here and do globe, mesh op, and then just same thing. Just And then 17, this is actually really nice, is I don't have to press C for channel haul, I could just start hauling, right? And I have my tool handles here, and it's it's the same deal, except it's procedural, and you could always go back and change it. So that's, that's globe. Um, but catenary is really interesting, where I can just click, mouse down, and drag out a catenary curve. And then I just can click, again, left mouse, and get my droopiness there, like that. And I can only just um, toggle verts on here and hide this uh, work, uh, work pane bench. Let me go to wireframe mode so you see me a little bit better. I can right click as usual to increase the number of segments. So you can see me right clicking, I have more and fewer vertices there. You could change this to you know a spline, um, which is a, like a B spline curve, a regular curve. Really not a lot of difference between those two, to be honest. And a polyline, polyline is like um, a polygon. So you can see it's sort of like you know linear there. Um, yeah, and then you just, I can just, you know, shift click and make a new one and drag it out over here like this or something or um, go to automatic action center so I can just, again, it respects a, a action center. So I'm just, you know, shift clicking, you know, click, you know, shift click, make a new one, adjust the up and down, um, you know, the droop, make a new one, adjust the droop, adjust the number of verts. You can see how fast it is, right? It's super great. And it'll respect snapping too. So um let's say i've got a couple of um, cubes here let me just go back to advanced mode so regular cube and then do it again so just duplicate this cuboid and move it over and then we'll go to an empty mesh and go to my catenary but again i'm i'm just i'm going to snap to polygon centers and i can just click and drag and snap to that center there or click and adjust, readjust it to that center or click and readjust it to that center and then adjust my droopiness and then if i want to change it to a polyline that's fine or a curve or whatever and um, right click for the number of, of vertices. It's super awesome, right? And so if you're doing um, cables now, I can keep those there, that's fine. What you'd normally do is, is go, we'll just call this like curve. And then you would go to just in for a new mesh. And then over here, we'll just call this uh, cable like that. We'll just, um, Hit, hit tab and then we'll use one of Steve's other primo primitives. Let's use a um, loop like this. And the reason we're using a loop is, let me just isolate it here, is I can you know change the size. But I can also just, again, call it a polyline and right click and change the number of sides, right? So I can do like, you know, 12 segments, sort of a, you know, whatever 12 segment polygon there like that. And then I'm going to do a curve um, sweep and I'll just unisolate this. I'm gonna pick for my curve sweep for my path. We'll pick the um, curve and there we go. If I need to make some adjustments, I can just, I can like flip it if I need to. So over here, flip. And again, right click is just gonna, you know, increase my segments there like that. You know, pretty sweet. And it's also, again, it's, um, uh, I'm in my curve here, so if I just make a new catenary, it's just going to automatically, um, with curve sweep, it's going to sweep that profile along any uh, curves in this mesh layer. So I can just, you know, just hold shift and make a whole bunch of them, right? If I'm making, um, you know, a bunch of cables down a hallway or something like that. I can do that. I can 
I can snap them anywhere. I can, um, yeah, just super awesome. And and there's there's also a um, a procedural one as well. So if I just like hide these curves and um, or hide the cables here, that's fine. And make a new mesh item. We'll just call this uh, mop cat for catenaries. And over here, we'll just add a catenary like, like this. And it just brings it up. Like let's just you know drag out. We'll just do this again. We'll just we'll just snap again. Snap to polygon center, and I'm just gonna snap that bad boy right there. And it's um, I could drag and get my droop, but it's just it's a it's a procedural one, right? So it's it's always I can always change any of this stuff. I can also change the margin, by the way, um, just a middle mouse drag if I want to like inset it or offset it like that. And if I want to make more, I can just I don't I don't need to make new mesh items. I could just have more in the same. Um, mesh item here just multiple mops in the same one like this right and I can just duplicate another one like this and and drag it out and change the curve and maybe put this one way down here or whatever and then let's go over to our cable and let's just change the um, uh, the curve to the mop cat curve and there you go right so the catenary curve is just sort of the first step towards making cables and pipes and things like that in moto uh, I know Steve's got some other stuff in mind, and he's very good at this. So, so it's it's a nice little update. And and by the way, he just he updates all of his kits all the time, and they're just free updates. He just you know they're they're all like all of them get updated with new mesh ops and stuff like that all the time. So go and buy Primo. Primo is like the the best thing you could buy for Moto right now. It just replaces all of Moto's um, primitives. There's a whole video on it if you haven't seen it yet on Pixel Fondue. But let's talk a little bit about this UI um, right now. So, okay, let's talk about this new uh, Create tab here. So I went ahead and put all the Primo tools at the top level, replacing the Moto tools. There's The Moto tools are still there. You see the little arrow? If you click and hold, you can get to the old cube if you want, if you're really a glutton for punishment. Uh, same with the old cylinder. If you want to mess around for five minutes to make a cylinder, you can get to it. Uh, but all the new good ones from Primo are at the top. Um, we've got all the curve ones as well. So basically, you know, all those primitive tools are here. They're just in a more consolidated state. And then what I did is I took all those duplicates off and I put them on the duplicate tab. So we've got stitch mesh and decals and tech, you know, mesh paint, tech tool. They're all here, right? And uh, like I said, these are the alliance are already there. So, um, and I put the action centers here. And the reason I did that is because I think it's important to learn them. And for a new Moto user, uh, it's nice to see these right here when you're creating primitives. And it helps you understand how they work, and it also tells you what the shortcut key is. So I think these are the most used ones, but if you want to go do something like local, you know, a little exotic right there, you can get the, that one, or uh, all the select ones are here, you know, and go to item local if you're doing items. Um, you can go to screen if you want to. So they're all here, but they're just available. So if I want to make a, a, a sphere or a globe at the origin, I can just very, very quickly just boom, I don't have to worry about it lining up at zero, zero. It's just going to do it. It's going to be locked there because my action center is origin, right? And so I think that's useful. I also think um, these XYZ centering keys are useful. They're right here now. <laughs> but again, these are things people use all the time, right? They just um, use all these all the time. So I put them right there. They don't take up much room. The other big thing I did is now this is a context sensitive area. If I'm in polygon mode, I have polygons selected. I mean, to get all the polygon tools right here and all the polygon commands right here. Now, it looks a little crowded. That's because I'm recording at 1920 by 1080. Any normal monitor is going to give you plenty of room for your uh, tool properties, right? So it looks a little crowded on the video, but you actually have a ton of room. And if I go to, um, if I convert those to edges, then I get all my edge commands and tools. If I convert those to vertices, I get all my vertice commands and tools, right? So it just pays attention to what's selected and gives you, you know, the tool options without having to like go do, go through all these like, <laughs> all these tabs all the time. And so if you're learning how to use Moto, this is really great. And then if once you get into some of the more exotic tools, like, you know, uh, maybe you want to do, uh, you know, like a radio line or something, um, you know, you can start exploring some of these other tabs. But it's nice to have all these right here on this first tab. Now, you could have some for item as well. Like if you go over here to where this context sensitive tab is, way over here to the right, um, you see there's some duplicate ones and, and there's some other tools for items like, you know, the duplicate, uh, the, like, you know, move, uh, you know, center to the item center, move pivot to item center, things like that or bounding box center, like some of those tools maybe I should 
put here in item mode, that's fine. Just let me know and I can put them there. Uh, but that's basically how this works, right? And then, uh, so let me show you. Oh, and also I made a popover too. So typically in like back here in the um, safe version, if I do uh, control tab, I get this old like crappy HUD or whatever. <laughs> Super useful thing if you want to, you know, use that tool. Um, but what I've done is I've created you know, all this stuff just as a popover. So that could be here. In fact, you could even just pin that and close this if you wanted to. And again, it's contact sensitive. So there's my um, polys, but if, I, if I'm doing edges, all this stuff changes. So I go to verts, all that stuff changes, right? And also you see the keyboard shortcuts, you see all your item is a little bit wider. So this is a little bit wider, obviously. So you see all of your uh, element action centers here. Um, you also have just a little more uh, centering options, I guess, as well. Um, but yeah, it's just, again, this is just like an easier way to work. That's just control tab, right? And so it's just a few different configs. It's just, if I go over here, if you go to your like your um, content folder, then your kits folder, you'll, it'll be basically three things. Um, there's the create form, which is this one right here. There is the popover form, which is the popover version. And there is a duplicate form where I've added, um, just in the duplicate tab, I had to add back in decals and stitch mesh. So and I maybe I'll add, add one more so that it'll be this the keyboard shortcut um, control tab for the popover. And and if you, they say pixel fondue right there, you put them in your kits directory and it should just work. And if you want to get rid of them, you just delete them from your kits directory and you're back to normal. Easy as that. Uh, you can also, you know, go in here and customize them if you want to. You go to the form editor and say find form. And let's go to the create form here and, and click this. And you'll see that it says pixel fondue create. And then there's the pixel fondue create popover. And here's the pixel fondue duplicate. So those will show up like that. And if you wanted to, you know, add something to those form here, you you can do that, right? And then you would just right click and you'd say save form and you'd save over the create form. And the next time you load Moto, your, you know, further customized form is there. So I, I think these forms are better than the default Moto forms. Um, I think um, it gives you all the tools you want to use generally right there. It helps you learn the keyboard shortcuts to these tools, right? and the action centers and of course you've got all the primo primitives which again primos i think is a must buy it's 20 bucks and um yeah right here primo 20 dollars. i'll put the link in the description but uh yeah everybody should get primo and then i think it's going to be a lot easier to use with this new form here as well so i'll put the form in the discord and i'll put this video up and just you guys let me know what you think yum yum